this is going to be uh, money well spent and uh, probably save you days <laughs> and days of headache. Leaders Press is a USA Today and Wall Street Journal best-selling press with traditional distribution via Simon & Schuster. Thanks to their work, more than 500 entrepreneurs have been able to share their stories with the world, and 133 of their authors have become USA Today and Wall Street Journal best-selling authors in their own right. If you'd like to discover which type of book would best suit you, go to leaderspress.com slash reveal. Welcome to the Leaders Get Published podcast. I'm Alinka Rutkowska, CEO of Leaders Press, and together with me is Deborah Brannan, our COO. And today we will be talking about how to publish an ebook, all the steps you need to know to be able to do that. So, Deborah, how do you publish an ebook? I guess it's just hit publish on KDP, or do we need to go through any more steps? I mean, yeah, that's it. You just throw your <laughs> just throw your PDF on Amazon KDP, and you're done. You just hit publish and walk away, and it's magical. Okay, now there is a little bit more to it than that, and we're just going to go through uh, a few steps that will help you present the best ebook and publish the best ebook that you can. Um, they're pretty straightforward. There are just a few, you know, uh, best practices and good tips that we can give you to help you make the best of each step of the way. So uh, the very first step is that you need a final manuscript. Like you need a finished book that's ready to be published before you get started on this journey. So we recommend obviously that you finish your book, you revise your book, you send your book to an editor that's not you because uh, you want a different pair of eyes. They should hopefully be professional eyes that will uh, go through your book and professionally edit it for you so that you can put your best book forward. Uh, so once you have finished the editing process, uh, you've gotten a professional edit job done, the book is complete, it's ready to go, that's when we can move into the second step of preparing your ebook for publication. All right, so next, now that you've gotten your finalized book, you want to work on that book description. So a great book description is what's going to attract new readers, hook them, and inspire them to buy. And uh, actually, Alink is a master at this, so I'm going to get her to, to give us a little quick insight into how to put together a great book description, and we'll talk about what it can do for you if you get it right. Awesome. Yes, we like to use the Gary Halbert technique um, that he used to use for copywriting. And uh, actually, if you go to, Gar to the Gary Halbert letter, Dot com you, should, you will find it it's called the aida principle and aida stands for attention interest desire action we use this not only to write our copy swipe for any emails or uh, whenever we do any type of marketing for the business or for our authors we also use it for descriptions so the attention is basically the headline um you could be as obvious as saying attention entrepreneurs um and then you could say, are you making these nine deadly mistakes? So that is the interest. You're starting to get into the interest part. And you basically uh, want to write sentences so that each sentence makes you want to read the upcoming sentence. So the job of the first sentence is for the reader to read the second sentence. The job of the second sentence is for the reader to read the third sentence and so on. So after you get people's attention, you want to get their interest. So you have to keep reading. If they're already interested, then you want to build up their desire. The way to do that in copywriting is usually through bullet points. So bullet points are really powerful, especially when you know how to write them. If you want to keep some mystery in them, you don't really want to give away everything. You, you'd rather say, um, 
you when you dive into the book you will discover the three techniques they don't teach you at business school so for example something like that or um uh, the five mistakes um 95 percent of entrepreneurs have admitted they made things like that that are true of course but you basically want to get people's desire to actually go get the book and then comes the final a in the aida framework which is action and take action could be you know as in your face as <laughs> buy the cop buy your copy now or you could be more subtle and say a dive in now to um discover how to grow your business this year so something like that there has to be a call to action so it's attention interest desire action and when you go to any leaders press book on, on amazon you will find that all our descriptions are written this way yeah it works especially well for nonfiction, which is of course what we specialize in publishing um so a link is definitely right. You know, look up any of our books on Amazon to check out examples of how we we use these successfully to attract new readers and grab their interest and get them to buy. Um, so, like your book description is one of the first big important parts of metadata that you'll put together for publishing your ebook on a platform like Amazon. Uh, the next big piece that you need to get right is your book cover. So uh, I know everyone says don't judge a book by its cover, but everybody first judges a book by its cover. <laughs> like you need something interesting and attractive that will grab someone's eye and make them take a second look at the book and get to that great book description we just mentioned, uh, and then you know take action and buy your book. So um, one of the ways that we like to develop our great book covers is number one, we work with a professional graphic designer. And I know that sounds scary and expensive, but it's really not, uh, especially in today's world uh, with such a huge marketplace online. I mean, you can even go to like sites like Fiverr uh, has like a huge community of artists who do graphic design for book covers. Um, there are a variety of sites where you can source a great graphic designer to help you out. So that's a, a great first step. So make sure you work with a professional. <laughs> Uh, and after that, to kind of conceptualize what an attractive cover would look like for you, we like to look at the, uh, the categories where we think our book would best fit, see which books are performing the best right now, and just take a look at their covers. Like what colors are they using? Uh, are they like mainly fonts? So it's just like large words and attractive type, or are they using pictures? What kind of pictures? Are they using pictures of people like the author, or are they using some kind of like provocative imagery that's related to the topic? So you just wanna look for these commonalities and the best performing books. And then you just wanna see what's attractive to you too. Like what makes you sing? What makes you excited for your book cover? And you can make a list of these things and your preferences, and then you can share that with the graphic designer that you, you chose and uh, get some potentials and then choose the best book cover for you. And uh, Alinka, would you suggest maybe they like poll their friends or colleagues when they're trying to choose the best book cover? That is an option, um, but just depending on how tech, 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 you are how tech savvy you are uh, you can enhance that um, exercise so for example just like you do like split testing or a b testing for ads you could do that for your cover so for example you could have um two different ads on facebook or even more and have them all go to the same landing page where people can download your book maybe the without the cover so uh this way you're able to see which cover that you have on the facebook ad is getting the largest uh, percentage of uh clicks and uh that will show you you know which people are actually interested in because you know you can poll your friends but i've studied statistics at university it was really tough but i learned something about sample size so that if it's not large enough it's not a statistically significant experiment um so you should have some statistic you know statistically significant numbers 
uh, we did, we have developed an eye for these types of things. So we're actually able to tell, you know, this cover will fly, this cover will not. Like if you look like, if you look at a lot of best-selling covers, which we do every day, you're going to start to see patterns and you'll be able to tell when you get it from the graphic designer, you're, you're able to tell that this looks just like the best-selling covers that are, that have been performing very well in this category. But if you don't have that type of um, experience or support from a professional team, then doing A-B testing is, um, is a good idea. And then, you know, you can, of course, poll your friends, um, but that can become tricky. I would definitely wouldn't show my manuscript to, <laughs> to anybody because, um, you know, who's not a professional, because uh, that will just um, basically... Uh, make your book a never ending story. So you'll never end, uh, you will never be done with it. And you do want to be done with it at a certain point. You abandon that work, you finalize it, you publish it, you market it, and then you start your next book. I think there's a quote out there that says something like a book is never finished, it's just abandoned. Yeah. Um, so you just get to the point where you're like, you got to call it good, you got to get it published. And I mean, you're absolutely right. The more friends that you ask for feedback on your manuscript, the more contradictory advice you get. And it can just lead to, like she said, a never ending circle of just uh, changes and changing it back and never being done. And you don't want to get into that mess. Yeah, I mean, they want to be helpful, right? They want to give some sort of feedback. Otherwise, it seems like they don't care. But also, they should just write their own books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so Alinka, for the A-B testing, like if they were testing two covers, would it be useful to do that for as like part of a pre-order campaign? Um, so that that way, when you do the actual launch, you've got your final cover chosen. Like, would that be effective? I would do it before it goes on pre-order. So like we create these uh, landing pages for advanced reviewers and that's a good moment to test it. So for example, two landing pages for advanced reviewers with two different covers, the exact same text and see which one gets more, a higher percentage of downloads. Higher a great conversion. idea. So they're promoting like an advanced review copy of the book, which will hopefully net them some early reviews while also testing which book cover uh, performs the best. That's great. Yeah, I mean, you want to be testing already good looking covers. You don't want to be testing, you know, two terrible $5 covers you got on Fiverr. <laughs> Maybe you were lucky and, you know, you have a New York Times or USA Today bestselling cover for five bucks off of Fiverr. Can't happen. I don't know if it ever has. But when you're doing the A-B testing, you really want to see which one is uh, good and which one is even better rather than which one is terrible and which one is less terrible. Yeah, if you go to Fiverr, you're probably going to be paying for those upper tiers, not that just that not that base $5 cover for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, you've got a final manuscript, you've got a great book description, you've got your book cover all figured out. Uh, now we want to address formatting. So obviously formatting is really important to your book. Um, you want to make sure it looks good on the ebook platform of your choice. Uh, so that when people are reading your book on their e-readers, it's an easy, pretty experience for them. Um, so they, they don't have any trouble reading your book and don't get turned off by the book being a mess. So this is something else that you should really work with a professional team for. And again, this is something that you can easily find in the online marketplace these days. Uh, you can find a, a good team who can do your book layout for you. So what they're gonna do is uh, usually a good team will provide a few different formats for you that are um, optimized for the different ebook platforms. Uh, so for example, like our team will always give us a uh, EPUB file that is specifically optimized for Amazon. And then we'll get another one that's optimized for other platforms. And then of course we also get a PDF, uh, which is what you want, especially when you're arranging for the print book layout um, on these online platforms too, but we're talking about eBooks today. So um, a couple of things you can consider is of course the different extensions, like uh, right now EPUB is I think the main 
one of the main formats that so many of these platforms use. Uh, Amazon used to have a proprietary format called Mobi, but they've since pivoted away from that. So now they use EPUB on their platform as well. And you want to, you uh, many of these book formats will be reflowable formats, which means that your reader can use the service to like change the size of the type and that kind of thing on their e-reader. And it's easy for them to do. Your book is reflowable. It takes to that, that changes in size of uh, type and that kind of thing easily. Again, leading to a great reading experience for your reader. Uh, like maybe if they're older and need larger type or something like that. Another type of layout is called fixed. Um, a fixed layout is often good if you have a very complicated text that has many illustrations or like needs to have some kind of specific formatting on the page uh, to make it look right. So uh, like more artistic books or like I said, illustration heavy books, this tends to be a better choice uh, to have a fixed layout where the images, for example, are anchored on the page and won't get messed up if um, on different devices. And then of course we mentioned the PDF, um, which is something that you, you need done correctly, especially for your print book. And uh, usually the PDF will be done first to make sure that you approve of it, approve of the, um, the font choices, the layout, and then your team will convert to ebook, which is when they'll, they'll make it either reflowable or fixed and you know set all the, the relevant data for the various ebook platforms. And like I said, get that done by a professional. You'll really love saving the time. It's not that costly. Uh, many of these teams will have a, a per page price. Um, but I think that I think that many of them are like less than a dollar a page. Does that sound right, Alinka? Mm, yeah, like without illustrations. Yeah. It might depend on the volume, like how many pages you're having done in the job. And yeah, I think like, that's about right. And yeah. yeah, I definitely want to, you want to get that uh, outsourced. It's something, um, I know one author who does it themselves for, 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 for his books, but I, I, you know, you can't be a one man or one person band. And if there's anything that you'd like to get started with, like this, I think is it. Just like you can't edit your book you really don't want to be formatting your book and learning all the tech and stuff. Uh, I think it's your time is much better spent uh, doing some marketing or um, just reaching out to people who can help you market your book or even writing your next book than, than doing this. So this is going to be uh, money well spent and uh, probably save you days <laughs> and days of headache. Yeah, in my past, uh, a long time ago, when I had private clients, I would help them publish their books, for example, on KDP. And I have done the formatting thing before, and it is such a pain. Um, just trying to make sure every little detail is right. And every time you feel like you're done, you know, when you're an amateur, when this is not something um, that you do professionally, do uh, you always find something else that you need to, to change or adjust. So uh, when you think about the cost of outsourcing your formatting, also think about the cost of your time and you'll quickly realize that the investment is really worth it to save you the time that you would have to spend trying to do this yourself. So we, we really recommend that. Mm. Um, okay, so the next thing we wanted to talk about was metadata. So you'll notice at this point, once you've like assembled all your pieces, so you've got your final files for uploading, you've got your book cover, you've got your book description, you wanna start setting it up in the online retailer's ebook platform. And uh, just for the purposes of today, we're mostly talking about Amazon KDP. So you'll find that they have a bunch of things to fill out. And of course, there's all the basic information like the book title, the author, if it's part of a series, like what number book it is in the series, if it's a series, uh, the book description, of course, and then you'll wanna kind of play with the formatting to make it look nice. 
Um, but then you'll get to additional metadata like keywords and categories. And you want to be careful and deliberate with your choices here as well. So um, for the keywords, you want to choose keywords that don't appear in your book title or your book description uh, because you've already used those two pieces of real estate to incorporate keywords. So you wanna take advantage of the extra keyword section to choose things that are still relevant to your book but that you haven't already covered. Um, we often recommend using a tool like um, Publisher Rocket which will let you search out keywords. So you just have like a big brainstorming session. Just try to think of everything that's possibly related to your book. And then you can search for those terms in a tool like Publisher Rocket. And it'll give you some insight into how these books are, or, I'm sorry, how these keywords are performing on Amazon. Um, so of course, you know, they don't have like the, the actual numbers behind the scenes because Amazon protects that information. They don't share it. You can't get it. But through their experience, and I'm, I'm speaking specifically of Publisher Rocket, uh, through their experience, you know, they've got some aggregate data that helps them look at how these keywords perform. So you can get some insight into like how much, uh, what is it, Alinka? It's like what the rankings are for the keywords. Yeah, like how, how much, much competition there is, how much these books are most probably making in terms of royalties how, you know, how difficult it is to rank for it. So there's a lot of information that you can use and you basically want a keyword that will um, bring in the highest possible uh, royalty, but that is also relatively easy to rank for. Exactly, it's a tension. Like you wanna maintain the best tension between popularity and, and uh, how much you could possibly make off of it. So to get into that sweet spot where, where it will perform the best for you. Um, and it's the same thing with categories. So of course, um, there are probably some main categories you have in mind for your book, uh, but you also want to be clever about the way that you choose your categories. So you can choose a couple that are highly competitive, but that you really want your book to be in. But uh, Amazon will let you have a total of 10 categories for your book. And we recommend that you use at least eight of those and really targeted categories that will help your book stand out and perform best. And again, a tool like Publisher Rocket will let you search out these subcategories and see, okay, well, how many book sales maybe do I need to get to rank in this category? And uh, like how popular is this category and that kind of thing. So you can kind of poke around Amazon, just like explore the subcategories till you find some that seem relevant to your book. Uh, and then you can go to Publisher Rocket and look that category up and see if it's a, a solid one for you to choose to maximize the performance of your book and to get into that bestseller status if that's your goal. So those are the two big pieces of metadata that you just want to, to focus on and to make sure you optimize so that your book will perform its best. And you do that when you're setting up the book behind the scenes on the, the ebook platform. So at this point, you also have to make a decision about the price point, like how much are you going to, to charge for this? And again, there's a, a tension here that you want to maintain between an attractive price point that invites people to buy your book and then like the best royalty you can get for your book so that you can maximize earnings. And Amazon uh, specifically, like they incentivize a specific price range for their eBooks. Like you'll notice that if you price your eBook between 2.99 and 9.99 US, they'll give you 70% royalty rate on your book. But if you go below that or above that, the royalty rates drop to 35%. So big incentive there to keep your, your ebook price between the, those two price points. Uh, so that's great. You know, we most of our books are priced in between that. And that's what we encourage our readers, or I'm sorry, our clients to do. But we also see the benefit of launching books at 99 cents. At 99 cents is an impulse buy. 
Like when you first launch your book, you want to get readers in, you want to inspire those readers to review, you want to get as many purchases as possible. Only getting a 35% royalty rate is worth it to, uh, to get that early swell of purchases. And so we will usually keep it at 99 cents for the first couple months before we start raising the price until we find that sweet spot that's between $2.99 and $9.99 um, for, for our clients. Yeah, did you have anything to interject about pricing, Alinka? Yeah, it's the law of supply and demand. You know, the lower the price, the higher the volume, which is what you want when you're launching the book, as many copies sold as possible, especially if you're going after some big lists. And um, it also is a really good strategy for the Amazon algorithms to notice the book and start showing it in various categories, different places, also bots. Also bought, sorry, when people are looking at a book and it says people, uh, customers have also bought <laughs> these here. So you want your book there. The more people buy your book, the, in more, uh, the more you know pages you'll be on in those also bots. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense. And there's another strategy that you might want to be interested in, which is permanently free ebook. So you might want to price it at zero, um, which you can't officially on Amazon, but if you price it at zero on other platforms and then tell Amazon to price match, they will. And uh, why would you do that? Well, maybe because you are a business or an entrepreneur and you have a funnel on the back end and you just want as many people as possible to get your book, click through and go um, sign up for whatever you're offering. So that's another strategy. And we have done it all <laughs> with our books. Like we have permanently free eBooks that have been performing extremely well and bringing in a lot of um, revenue on the back end. We've been doing 99 cent launches that have got our books on USA Today, Wall Street Journal bestseller list. And we've been also maximizing royalties for authors interested in, uh, in, in that part of the revenue that you can get from your book. Exactly. Oh, and another, just another tactic for trying to determine the price of your ebook, um, you could do comparative pricing. So look at your genre and look at the other books that are performing really well in your genre, see how they're priced. And then you can use that to guide you and inspire you to develop your own price point. So the last component uh, that we need to address today is deciding when to publish. How to choose your publication date. So there is definitely something to be said for a pre-order period. So when you're setting up your book, you can choose to put it on pre-order. Um, I think usually if you want to put it on pre-order on Amazon, you have to choose a date that's at least like a week or two out from when you're setting it up because uh, they have uh, their system requires you to upload a, a pre-order final, final uh, files for a pre-order the Friday before the Tuesday it releases. Uh, so if you want to pre-order, you have to set it up like at least most of a week early. But of course, if you're doing a pre-order period, you'll want to set it up much earlier than that so that you have time to promote it um, and get people to pre-order your book. So the benefits of pre-order, um, it lets you create buzz, you know, so you have time to do promotion and marketing before the book is released. And every bit of the pre-orders will go live on publication day. So it gives you that early swell of sales um, to help catapult your book onto those, those lists on Amazon, like Amazon's bestseller or you know, number one new release lists. And you can even get a badge next to your book that you can screenshot and show off and show like my book's the number one new release in its category or my book's the number one bestseller. Um, and of course that helps uh, just passively uh, because if the algorithms picked it up that your book has all this traffic, um, it'll show it as trending, like it'll start putting it at the top of searches or that kind of thing. So it can just, that getting that traffic can, can really help um, build up some, some algorithm based buzz for your book. Uh, but a critical part of your pre-order campaign is going to be an actual campaign. Like you need to actually spread the word. You need to have a likely a marketing budget where you can spend on, for example, Facebook ads that Alinka mentioned earlier. Um, and, you know, you can get very specific with these things and set a very specific budget. 
to make sure your ad doesn't go over that. Uh, so there are ways to do this on a budget so you don't break the bank when you're trying to, to run this pre-order campaign. You just need to be very clear about what your budget is, set things up appropriately, and then run them to generate that buzz. Um, Alinka, what are your best practices for doing promotion during a pre-order period? Right, so we said we launch books on a Tuesday. Um, that's us because uh, it's a great practice if you want to hit those big lists. That's because the pre-orders hit or the total number of sales hits on the Monday and the bestseller um, sales are calculated between Monday and Sunday. So that's why we do that. It's also traditionally the date of publication. It's been a Tuesday. And um, since we distribute via Simon & Schuster, it's also something that we do for our books. But that does not mean that you have to launch on a Tuesday as a um, self-publisher. True. And as far as uh, promotional strategies for pre-orders are concerned, you really need to do the math in your head to see what your goals are and what you need to do every day to achieve those. So if, for example, you're looking to hit the USA Today bestseller list and you know that you need about 6,000 sales and you want to divide those 6,000 sales by the number of days you have in your pre-order campaign, and you can have a one-year pre-order campaign right now. So you divide to 6,000 divided by 300. And then um, you, here you see how many books you need to um, sell every day and you can track your progress. Amazing. So just break it down into a to-do list and then execute your to-do list. That sounds easy, right? Sounds easy, yeah. <laughs> And so uh, there we have it. Like once you've put together all these components, you've set your book up on the platform, you've chosen your publication date, you're ready. Like you can launch your book when you come to your chosen publication date and ta-da, you have published your ebook and you've done it in the best way geared to create an attractive product for your readers and then also to optimize and maximize its performance uh, once you do publish it. Oh, like I said, it's really fairly straightforward. I mean, I know there are a lot of moving parts and you do have to, to learn some best practices for each part, uh, but it's not really complicated and arcane. It is definitely something you can learn and feel confident about executing on your own. Amazing, yes. And after you've done your ebook or maybe during that process, you probably want a paperback and an audiobook and maybe something else. Uh, but this is something that we discuss in other episodes of yes. Leaders Get Published. Thank you for listening. This has been the Leaders Get Published podcast brought to you by Leaders Press. Don't miss another episode and subscribe today at leaderspress.com slash subscribe. And if you'd like to discover which type of book you should write, go to leaderspress.com slash reveal.